Australia, a vast and diverse land known for its unique wildlife, stunning landscapes and rich agricultural heritage. From the arid outback to the lush rainforests, Australia is a country of contrasts and natural beauty, a land of amazing animals, plants and farms. Kangaroos hopping across the plains, koalas nestled in eucalyptus trees, and vibrant native flowers blooming in the wild. Australian farms produce a bounty of crops and livestock, contributing significantly to the nation's economy and food supply. For years, Australia was safe from a tiny but dangerous bug called the Varroa destructor mite. This mite, barely visible to the naked eye, has wreaked havoc on honeybee populations around the globe. Honeybees, essential pollinators for many crops, have been under threat from this relentless parasite. This mite hurt honeybees all over the world, but not in Australia. The island continent's isolation had kept it free from many pests and diseases that plagued other parts of the world. Australian beekeepers enjoyed a unique position, able to maintain healthy hives without the constant fear of varroa mite infestations. Then, in June 2022, everything changed. The discovery of the varroa mite in Australia sent shockwaves through the beekeeping community and beyond. It marked the end of an era of relative safety and the beginning of a new uncertain chapter. At the port of Newcastle in New South Wales, the varroa mite was found. Everyone was worried. The port, a bustling hub of activity, became the epicenter of a biosecurity crisis. The implications of this discovery were far-reaching, threatening not only the beekeeping industry, but also the broader agricultural sector. It was a big emergency. Authorities quickly mobilized, holding urgent meetings and deploying emergency response teams. News headlines blared the alarming discovery, and the nation watched anxiously as efforts to contain the outbreak began. This tiny mite was a huge problem for Australian bees and the important work they do to help plants grow. Honeybees are crucial pollinators, responsible for the reproduction of many flowering plants and the production of fruits, vegetables and nuts. Without them, the agricultural landscape would be drastically altered. Everyone had to act fast to protect the bees and the farms that depend on them. Beekeepers, farmers and scientists joined forces, working tirelessly to develop strategies to combat the mite and safeguard the nation's bee populations. The sense of urgency was palpable, as the stakes were incredibly high. Right away, people tried to get rid of the mite. Various methods were employed, from chemical treatments to mechanical interventions, in an all-out effort to eradicate the pest. The beekeeping community showed remarkable resilience and determination, adapting quickly to the new threat. They stopped bees from moving and checked all the hives near Newcastle. Quarantine zones were established, and strict biosecurity measures were put in place to prevent the mite from spreading further. Beekeepers meticulously inspected their hives, looking for any signs of infestation. Beekeepers near the port had to kill their bees, which was very sad. The decision to destroy infected hives was heartbreaking but necessary to protect the broader bee population. The sight of empty beehives and the sorrow of beekeepers who had lost their colonies underscored the gravity of the situation, but it was important to stop the mite from spreading. The collective efforts of the beekeeping community, supported by government agencies and researchers, aimed to contain the outbreak and prevent the varroa mite from establishing a foothold in Australia. The battle against this tiny invader was far from over, but the resolve to protect Australia's bees remained strong. Everyone worked hard, day and night, tirelessly dedicating their efforts to a common cause. Their mission was clear to get rid of the mite that threatened their livelihood and the health of their bees. The government, beekeepers and scientists all worked together in a coordinated effort. Meetings were held frequently, strategies were discussed, and every possible solution was considered. Inspectors checked hives meticulously, taking samples and analyzing them in labs. Scientists worked around the clock, trying to understand the mite's behavior and find a way to stop it. They tried to track the mite's spread using maps and data analysis to predict its next move. Every piece of information was crucial in this battle, but the mite was tricky. It spread quickly and adapted to new environments, making it a formidable opponent. 
Beekeepers inspected their hives carefully, using magnifying glasses to search for the tiny invaders. Despite their best efforts, the mites were hard to find and even harder to eliminate. After more than a year of relentless effort, in September 2023, the beekeepers were exhausted. They had poured their hearts and souls into this fight. Everyone realized they couldn't get rid of the mite. The disappointment was palpable. It was a hard pill to swallow, but the reality was undeniable. The mite had spread too far and too fast. The initial plan of eradication was no longer feasible. It was time to change strategies. Instead of trying to get rid of the mite, they had to learn to live with it. This shift in strategy required a new approach and a new mindset. This was hard news for everyone involved. The beekeepers, who had fought so hard, now had to adapt to a new reality. The battle for eradication had turned into a battle for coexistence. The Varroa mite, a tiny but formidable parasite, is a significant threat to both wild and domesticated bees. This pest is not just a problem for bees on farms, but also for wild bees that play a crucial role in our ecosystems. Wild bees, which help our native plants grow and maintain biodiversity, are in big trouble due to the Varroa mite infestation. Beekeepers have the tools and knowledge to help their bees fight off these mites through various treatments and interventions. However, wild bees do not have the same level of support and are left to fend for themselves, leading to a significant decline in their populations. The impact of the Varroa mite extends to agricultural settings as well, where bees are essential for pollinating crops. Infested bees become sick and weak, unable to perform their vital roles in the hive and in the environment. This can lead to the collapse of entire hives, resulting in fewer bees and less honey production. Beekeepers now face increased challenges and responsibilities, working tirelessly to protect their bees and ensure the survival of their hives. They employ various methods, from chemical treatments to mechanical interventions, to combat the mite and save their bees. The health of our bee populations is critical not only for honey production, but also for the pollination of many plants that we rely on for food and natural beauty. Researchers are continuously studying the Varroa mite to find more effective ways to control its spread and mitigate its impact on bee populations. Communities can also play a role by creating bee-friendly environments, planting native flowers, and avoiding the use of harmful pesticides. Education and awareness are key to ensuring that future generations understand the importance of bees and the threats they face. By working together, we can help protect our bees and ensure that they continue to thrive, supporting both our agriculture and natural ecosystems. The Varroa mite isn't just a problem for bees. Bees help grow lots of our food, and that's worth lots of money. The mite could cause big problems for farmers and everyone who buys food. Fruit, vegetable and nut farms need bees. Almonds, avocados, blueberries and other foods need bees to grow. If the bees are sick, there will be less food, and food will be more expensive. The Varroa mite isn't just bad on its own. It also carries viruses that make bees even sicker. One virus called deformed wing virus, or DWV, is especially bad. DWV makes bees' wings messed up so they can't fly. They can't do their jobs in the hive. The Varroa mite makes DWV and other viruses much worse. This can cause whole hives to die. If we don't do something, the mites and viruses could kill lots of bees. The government, beekeepers, and scientists are working together to fight the Varroa mite. They can't get rid of it, but they can try to control it. They are making it harder for the mite to spread. They are checking what comes into Australia and watching where bees go. Finding the mite quickly is important. Almonds are in big trouble because of the Varroa mite. Almond trees need bees to grow nuts. Almond farms need lots of bees at the right time. They bring in bees from all over the country. But now it's harder to find healthy bees because of the mite. Almond farmers are worried about finding enough bees and how much it will cost. No one knows exactly what will happen because of the Varroa mite, but things are definitely different now. Beekeepers, farmers, and the environment will have problems because of the mite. The fight against the mite isn't over. Everyone needs to keep working together to find ways to control the mite and help the bees. 
The Varroa mite shows us that everything is connected and nature is important. Everyone needs to work together to help bees and other insects that help plants grow. We can help beekeepers, make places for bees to live, and learn more about how to help them. If we help the bees, we help ourselves and the planet.